Okay, we're gonna begin with the yellow belt basics, the foundation to the Kempo techniques. Okay, first of all, let's go through the stances. Attention stance, feet together standing tall. Horse stance, boom, back to attention stance. Step back into a fighting stance, right foot back. Okay, we also call this a neutral bow. From the fighting stance, let's go to a forward bow. It's gonna shift their weight forward, go ahead and throw that punch, and lock out that back leg. Back to a neutral bow, and then slide into a cat stance. The purpose of the cat stance is one for defense and also prepare you for a kick. Okay, back to your tension stance. And let's begin with the basic blocks. Get into a horse stance. Inward blocks. Okay, ready? And move. 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 Okay, vertical outward block. Ready? Move. 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 Good. Extended outward block. Ready? Move. 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 And upper blocks. Ready? Move. Move, 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 and downward blocks. Ready, move, 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 move. Notice when they do these blocks, they're keeping it all within their own framework here. They're tailoring each move to fit them, just like we want you to do the same for yourself. Okay, let's go through the punches, thrusting horizontal punch. Ready, move, 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 move. When we practice these horizontal punches, we want to make sure we're striking towards the center of our chest below the shoulder, at or below the shoulder, so you practice hitting with these first two knuckles. Okay, this is the horizontal punch. Go ahead and shave your hands. Let's move to the vertical punch. Ready? Move, 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 move. Okay, just like the, we did the horizontal punch, the center of the body, we're striking towards the center, which would be towards your own chin. If you have a mirror at home, make sure you use the mirrors. You're striking at your own chin, so we make sure we practice hitting with the first two knuckles. If you were to put your hand up against the wall and do a horizontal punch above your shoulder, you'd actually break your fingers, which most people do when they do get in a fight. So the vertical punch is for striking above your shoulders. Okay, chamber the hands. We do these thrusting and we also do these snapping. So let's do the horizontal punch snapping. Ready? One, two, three, four. Look at this. Vertical punch snapping. One, two, three, four. Awesome. Okay, let's move into the, uh, the strikes. Inward hand sores. Ready? One, two. Three, four. Okay, we call these hand swords because that's what they look like. They look like swords made out of your hand, striking with the meat part of your hand right in here. Okay, and let's do the outward hand sword. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Good, chamber the hands. Okay, outward blocks again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Notice when he does the outward block, we call this a double factor. The next block travels on the outside. Okay, so when we do the outward blocks, and the extended outward blocks that way. We also want to make sure our strikes are done the same way. So, let's move back to the outward hand swords. Ready, and one. Real slow, two, three, and four. And one more time, real slow, one. So it travels right on the outside. See, Paul's making sure that you guys are staying with us, keeping you in check here. Okay, outward hand swords gonna travel on the outside. And the outside. 
And I know you guys have slow-mo. You'll be able to pick this up, but we're going to do a little bit slower. Travels on the outside. Chambers his hand. And watch the right hand travel on the outside. Awesome. I know we're going to get this, Paul. Okay, let's do it one more time. Ready? One. A little faster. Two. Three. And four. Good. Chamber the hands. Let's move to the elbow strikes. Inward elbow. Ready? One. Two. Three. And four. Good. Notice they brace this against their chest. Elbows are for close range. If you have this elbow, this hand way out here, you may have a chance of striking yourself. So you brace it against your body. And the elbow's nice and level with your shoulders. Okay? Elbows are your most powerful weapons of the body besides the knees. Okay? And again, one, two. If then we can do inward elbows, we can do outward elbows. Ready? One. Let's do that again. If we can do inward elbows, we can do outward elbows. Right, guys? Okay, here we go. Ready? And one. Thank you very much. Two. I know you guys are paying attention. I don't know about these guys. Three, four, five, and six. Chamber the hands. Let's move to the obscure elbow. Ready? One, and two, three, and four. This is, we call this obscure, which means blind spot. Somebody behind you. Somebody you can't see from your peripheral vision. Think of this as pulling some change out of your pocket. Or just looking for what time it is. Okay? One more time. And we do these snapping. We never just pose with the obscure elbow strike. So you want to make sure we come back down and protect the groin area and the ribs. Okay, ready? And one, two, three, four. Good. Let's do the back hammerfish strike. Ready? One, two, three, and four. And notice every time they strike to certain areas, they always look. Okay, we don't want mom or pop coming up behind you and all of a sudden we just throw that hammer fist because we're practicing. Okay, we don't want to get the good guys. Okay, chamber of the hands. Let's go with the outward back knuckle strike. Ready? One, two, three, four. Five, six. And let's just leave it out there just for a second, Paul. Good. So this is just like the outward block. It's kind of outward motion. You're hitting with the back of the knuckles. And we do these snapping so when we get used to doing uh, sparring techniques and things like that, that we're not posing with these back knuckle strikes. Okay, chamber the hands. One more time. One, two, three, and four. The, the finger techniques, the claws. Inward overhead claw. Ready? One, two, three, four. Awesome. Go ahead and chamber the hands. Okay, attention stance. Let's move right into the kicks. Fighting stance. Okay, we're going to work on the front snap ball kick. And just in counts, the knee comes up first. Then you extend the leg, hitting with the ball of the foot. Knee comes back, pivot, back into your good fighting stance. Here we go. Ready? And one. And two. And three. And the feeling that you want to have on these kicks is a linear motion, not a circular upward motion. Because if you throw this kick, if I was to throw this kick at, at Jason here, if he was just to lean back and I kick, my kick would miss him. So I want to make sure that I'm going straight towards him. So when you practice these kicks, make sure they go straight out, just like a punch, okay? Let's do a few more. Ready? And one. And two. Good. Let's switch your stance. Balance. Got to work both sides. Ready? One. And two. And three. Good. Switch. If you do front kicks, we can do back kicks. Here we go. Ready? One. And two, three, four. On the back kicks, we call it the back snap heel kick because you are hitting with the heel of the foot. Important part is making sure the toes are down. What I like to tell the students is to make sure that they keep their shoulders forward. They don't pull that shoulder back because it pulls the hips back. And that also makes your toes come up. So keep the shoulder forward. Just look over the shoulder and throw that back kick. Okay, let's do a few more. Ready, one, two. Good, switch your stance. Ready, one, two. And three. Good. Switch. From here, let's go to the knife edge kicks. We call this a side knife edge. The direction we're kicking is to the side. The knife edge part is using the edge of your foot. Okay, here we go. Ready? One. And two. And three. Okay, so when we throw that kick, we want to make sure that we're pushing that heel out, pulling the toes towards us, and thrusting it or snapping it actually to the side here, and then bringing it back into a fighting stance. Okay, a couple more. Ready? Move. And hope, hope. Okay, make sure you guys snap it out. Bring it out. Bring it back just as fast as you bring it out. Ready? Hope. Good. And hope. Good. Switch. On the side. Hope. 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 Switch. Last of the yellow belt kicks is the roundhouse kick. Okay, the roundhouse kick, just like it sounds, comes in a circular motion. Comes around. It starts out just like the front snap ball kick. Let's do it in, in steps, you guys. Ready? One. So the, the knee's going to come up, practicing good balance. Two. As we start to pivot, then we extend the leg. 
and we're going to be hitting with the instep. Okay, we call this the roundhouse kick. Let's try one more time. Real slow. Ready? One and two. As we pivot, the leg extends and back. Okay, let's do a little bit faster. Ready? And move. Good. And move. Awesome. Move. Good. Let's switch stance. And move. Excellent. Move. Move. Good. Switch. Okay, those are our basic kicks. Now we're going to go to the basic foot maneuvers. Let's start with a step drag, just like it sounds. You're going to step with the lead foot, dragging the back foot. And whenever we do the step drag, the purpose of step drag is not only to close the distance or to gain some distance or create some distance, but also to make sure that your hands are ready to be used for action or for your defense. So the hands are going to be used in this movement, maybe striking, punching, or elbowing. Okay, step drag. Lift up the front foot, drag the back foot. And again, move. And move. Good. Retreating, looking over the shoulder. Move. 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 Let's work both sides. Switch. Advancing with a step drag. Move. Move. Retreating. Move. Move. Awesome. Now we're going to do a, a movement, what we call covering. We want to check who is behind us. And when we cover, we don't want to step into the attacker or the possible subject. We want to make sure that we're not going into something blind. And if they used their back leg, they would be stepping in something blind. So we're going to use the lead leg. So when we cover, we're going to just make a slight adjustment. In this particular situation, they're going to adjust with their right foot. Okay, ready? And move. And notice when they adjust, they're adjusting into the neutral bow or the fighting stance, now facing 6 o'clock. And if we kept covering all the way down, they'd actually keep moving this way. Let's try it one more time. Cover. Another foot maneuver. This is a quickie. Switch. You guys have already seen that tons of times. Now cover again. Cover. 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 Switch. Good. And that basically covers all our basics, our ABCs. Get into a horse stance, you guys. And we did all of our basics in a horse stance. You guys are going to learn, and we'll just a couple seconds real quick. We're going to go over some of the basics, advancing and retreating. Okay, let's back up just a tiny bit. Okay, advance with an inward block. Ready, move. And move. And retreating. Move. Move. Now I'm going to throw some curveballs at these guys. They just got to keep up with me, okay? Advance with an upper block. Move. Move. Retreat with a downward block. Move. Move. Advance with an inward elbow. Move. Move. Retreat with an outward hand sword. Move. And move. Good. Advance with an inward overhead claw. Move. Move. Retreat with an outward elbow. Move. And move. Good. And Paul made a nice adjustment. When we do that outward elbow, it goes right towards the front. Okay, get, let's advance with a front snap ball kick. Move. And retreating with a front ball kick. Move. And that takes care of our yellow belt basics. Okay, we're going to move right into the first set. This is called star block. This is putting all your blocks together. And it looks like the shape of a star. Okay, ready? One. We're going to start with the right hand. Start with the upper block. Two. This is an inward block. A lot of times I call this the extended inward block because we don't want this block to come just straight across. We want to imagine we have a knife in our hand we're stabbing somebody. So we're meeting the action, not waiting for the action to come to you. And it's also in position for the next block. Ready? Three. And hopefully you guys have been practicing your ABCs, your blocks. What's the name of this? What's the name of this, Jay? Extended, extended outward. Extended outward block. Right on. Okay. And four. Downward block. Five. Okay, we chamber our hands. We also call that a back elbow strike. But let's go back to the downward block again. When we put this downward block back, we've got to make sure that we retrace its path. Okay, because that becomes an inward, inside downward block, which is one of our orange belt basics. And then we chamber the hand. And then we go to a push down block. Good. Push down block, elbow slightly bent. We don't want to lock it out. So a lot of beginners lock it out. If you lock it out, there's no way that you're going to stop anything, that, especially somebody's knee, and you're just going to drive that elbow through the shoulder. And all this is a little shock absorber. And it stops right about your belt level. Okay? So let's try it again from the top. Ready? One. Upper block. Two. Inward block. Three. Extend it outward. Four. Downward. Five. Awesome reverse motion. Back elbow strike. And six. Push down block. 
chin to the hands. When we say six, you're going to pop it right back into a back elbow strike. Let's try the left hand. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Awesome. And snap it right back. Good. Both hands. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Good. So you can practice it right hand, left hand, both hands. When you get a little bit more advanced, when we go for the green belt rank, you're going to be doing it opposite and reverse. Let's do it a little bit faster. Right hand ready. One, two, three, four, five, six. Left hand. One, two, three, four, five, six. Both hands. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we're going to get into the short form one, your yellow belt form. Anytime we do forms, you got to make sure that you always start with the greeting. So, see, Paul, we'll start with the greeting. It's a real simple form, all the basic blocks. Facing 12 o'clock, starting with the inward blocks. One, two. And he's going to face 9 o'clock, doing an inward, outward block. Ready? Three and four. Good. Now he's going to do his foot maneuvers, what we call covering. He's going to do an inward, upper block facing 3 o'clock. Ready? One and two. Stepping back. And now the downward blocks towards 6 o'clock. Ready? One and two. And facing the front. That's right handed. There are nine moves to short form one. We're going to do it one more time right handed. Ready? One. I'm going to count them off. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. End up in a horse stance, feet together, and you'll close it up with the greeting. Good. But now we're going to do it one more time right and left handed. Here we go. Full short form one. Start with the greeting. Now he's going to move right into the left hand. Excellent. And then he will close it up with the greeting. Okay, let's start off with delayed sword. As Jay throws me a right punch. Let's go a little bit faster. So we'll do street speed first. And some Paul, so we can give you two different angles. This is called delayed sword. Now they're gonna demonstrate it by the numbers. Okay, as they're facing the front, the attack comes from 12 o'clock, stepping back with an inward block, one. The right inward block, two, a front snap ball kick to the groin area, then as they land, using the urge of gravity, they're going to do an outward hand sword strike to the neck. Notice uh, Paul has his hand checking for the unintentional strikes. That's what makes Ke uh, Kempo unique, is we're always checking for the unintentional strikes as well as the intentional strikes. Okay, let's do it more time. Natural stance, stepping back. One, two, kick, and three. Good. Last time, a little bit faster. Ready, one, two, and three. Last time, a little faster. Ready, and move. Awesome. Go ahead and face each other, you guys. Okay. Good. Okay, this is called delayed sword. Now let's move on to the second technique. Deflecting hammer. This is an attempted right step through kick. Stepping to the side, shuffling forward in a step drag and inward elbow strike, checking the arm. Sickle Paul comes in, stepping back, shuffle forward, and inward elbow to the head. Okay, this is deflecting hammer. Let's do it by the numbers. Ready, one, downward block, two, step drag, inward elbow strike, checking, and striking high. One more time, by the numbers, one, and two. Again, a little bit faster without the numbers. Ready, and boom. Good, go ahead and face each other. Okay, we're going to do captured twigs in Kempo. The twigs are the arms. He's got my arms captured. 
I'm gonna step to the side, dropping my weight, checking the hands for the unintentional strike, back hammer fist to the groin. One thing on this, you wanna make sure you got good posture. If I start to lean forward, all his weight's gonna come on top of him. Keeping my back straight keeps him off balance. Turn the side as I check the hands. I'm gonna stomp on the foot, launch, obscure elbow strike up high, and then step away. Okay, see the ball grabs from a different angle. As soon as he grabs, drop, hammer fist to the groin, back hammer fist, turn, stomp, elbow strike, and then step away. Okay, let's do it by the numbers. Ready, one. Stepping to the side, into their horse stance, checking the hands, back hammer fist, good posture. Two, cat stance, checking the hands. It's like their push down block, now we're just changing angles with the push down blocks. Three, stomp and launch into a obscure elbow strike. And they end up in a horse stance. Let's do it by the numbers one more time. Ready, one, two, and three. Good, one more time, a little bit faster, no numbers. Ready, move. Awesome. Go ahead and do it on each other, you guys. Okay, one more time, Paul. This is a great example of practicing our point of origin. Now watch the right hand. We gotta make sure that we use point of origin. That's where movement begins, where it originates. You want it to go straight to the back hammer fist. If you feel your hand coming forward, then he's gonna know something's happening. And he may change his grab, maybe take you to the ground or kick you or something. Right now, he may just be trying to control you. But you're gonna make sure that back hammer fist goes straight back. It doesn't come forward to generate more power because if you think you're gonna get more power, you may not even get that strike off, okay? So good point of origin, straight back. Good thing to practice is just that first move over and over. Okay, watch Paul do it again. Awesome. Okay, let's go to sword and hammer, technique number four. Side shoulder grab. Step away. Okay, they're gonna do it by the numbers now. This is probably one of the simplest techniques you're gonna learn. As the opponent comes from the side, one, check the hand. The blue light special, the option is stomping on the foot with a knife edge and raking down. And two, two steps, sword, then hammer. One more time. Ready, one, then two. Paul's getting a little excited over here. Let's start one time. Ready, one, and two. Okay, let's let them demonstrate on each other. Side shoulder grab. Okay, the next technique is called checking the storm. As Jason grabs a club, the tag comes from 12 o'clock. Go ahead. And you take the stick away. Make sure you always take the weapon away. Okay, let's do it by the numbers. The attack comes from 12 o'clock, stepping out of the line of fire. One, so directly to three o'clock. Two, as they grab, this is where we get the name checking. They're checking the storm hand. They're gonna be pulling on the wrist as they do two kicks. Snap kick to the groin, knife edge to the knee, back fist as they land, pulling with the opposite hand. One more time, by the numbers. Ready, one, two, three, and four. Good, a little bit faster now, checking the storm. And boom. Go ahead and face each other. Overhead club attack. Excellent. Good. Okay, the next technique is called alternating mace. Person comes with a two hand front push. SJ comes in, clear, solar plex, and back fist to the face. Go faster. And always step away. Don't stand there in front of your opponent when you're done with the technique. Real slow. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, one more time. And notice that a lot of the stance changes from neutral bow, forward bow to neutral bow. Gives the body a little bit more power, a little more body rotation. By the numbers again. One, two, and three. Okay, a little bit faster. Ready? Move. Okay, face each other. Tenth of two-hand push. Good. Okay, the next technique is called Sword of Destruction. This is against a left roundhouse attack. As Jay comes in. Okay, a little bit faster. Sword of Destruction. From a natural stance, a left roundhouse attack. Ready, one. <clears throat> Stepping back with extended outward block. The right hand, two. 
front snap ball kick to the groin, and three, an inward hand sword. One more time. This time, make sure you keep your balance on number two. Ready, one, two. After the front snap ball kick, before you guys put your foot down, let's do that again. Ready, one, two. Stay in a one-legged stance, good. Now, as they land, they're gonna do the inward hand sword. Three, good. A little bit faster now. Ready, and hoop. Good, face each other. Excellent. Okay, sort of destruction. Now we're gonna move into the technique grasp of death. Okay, the opponent comes in with a side headlock. Real important, the first thing is when you guys practice this particular technique, anytime somebody grabs you by the neck, don't just let them grab you by the neck. Always tuck the chin and turn your head in as they attempt to grab you, okay? Turning my head, stepping as I grasp between the leg, I'm gonna pinch, step over, checking the arm, and a punch to the jaw, okay? A little bit faster, the same goal, right here, grab. Okay, let's do it by the numbers. Okay, ready? One. Okay, stepping. Actually, four things are happening. Step, pinch, pulling on the arm, and turning the head. One more time. On the top. Ready? One. Step, pinch, pull, and turn. Two. Step around, pull the arm over your head. And three. Horizontal snapping punch to the jaw. And again, by the numbers. Ready? One. Two. And three. Excellent. Go ahead and face each other. Okay, let's go into the technique, mace of aggression. Opponent grabs you by the shirt, two hand front pull. Checking the hands, hammer fist across the face. Keep them tight, inward elbow and outward elbow. A little bit faster. Okay, mace of aggression. This is the first technique where you actually step forward. And the reason you're stepping forward is because they're pulling you. You don't want to make it a, a who's stronger match. Okay, as they pull you forward, go with them. Ready, one. Check in the hands, hammer fist across the face. Then it continues on to a horizontal position. That keeps the opponent in check, their face close. Two, inward elbow strike. Three, an outward elbow strike. One more time, nice and relaxed. Ready, one, two, and three. Excellent, a little bit faster. Ready, and hook. Okay, face each other. Awesome. Okay, the last technique. We made it to the end of the yellow belt techniques. It's called attacking mace. Fun technique, step through right punch, two, inward block, punch to the ribs, check the hand with a roundhouse kick, checking the legs with a vertical snapping punch to the kidneys. Okay, from this angle. Okay, by the numbers. Ready, one, two, three. As they grab, notice they make a little adjustment step so they can really extend that leg for a little bit more power for the roundhouse kick. Okay, go ahead and kick. And as they land, like all the other techniques, you gotta make sure, you're gonna hear this a lot when we teach marriage of gravity, a snapping punch, vertical punch to the kidneys. Then again, ready, one, two, three. Okay, and let's eliminate a step. When we say three, we're gonna throw that kick. So let's do it again. Ready, one, two, three, and four. Awesome. A little bit faster without the numbers, and hoop. Good, face each other. Okay, and that completes our yellow belt techniques. We're gonna move on to what we call the technique form, something really unique to other Kempel systems. Let's get ready. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate the technique form. The beauty of this technique form is you've learned all the techniques, and they're gonna be done in its ideal phase. The only thing that you gotta look at is the time that the attacks are coming from. Okay, I'll start with the greeting.
And that's all there is to it. I'm going to have Sibu Paul and Sibu Jason come out so you can see the application of this technique for them. First technique, delayed sore, comes in with the right punch. And this is 12 o'clock, deflecting the hammer from 3 o'clock. Captured twigs, again I'm facing 12 o'clock. Sword and hammer from 6 o'clock, as I step. And checking the storm, coming from 5 o'clock. Alternating mace, 7 o'clock. Sword of destruction, 10 o'clock. Grasp of death, 12 o'clock. Notice I'm not altering any of the techniques. And attacking mace, last technique, 12 o'clock. And step away, and you're done. This is the technique form, good luck.